right. All right, I have 6.30, so I will go ahead and uh, call the meeting to order. Uh, roll call, please. Isaac Donko? Here. Marge Jorgensen? Here. John Carl? Here. Mary Coons? Murray Mason? Here. Lisa Panzer? Chad Freely? Here. Gary Spielman? Here. Joanne Hedges? Here. Please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, we have minutes from the regular meeting on June 13th and special meeting on June 27th. I move for approval of the regular meeting minutes from June 13th and the special meeting minutes of June 27th. Second. All right, we have a motion and a second to approve the regular meeting minutes on June 13th and special meeting on June 27th. All in favor say aye. 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 All those not, same time. All right, so thank you for those that joined us tonight. Appreciate you being in attendance personally and then also those that are watching on the YouTube channel. Thank you for being with us tonight. We do not have anybody signed up for public comment. We will move on to announcements. Uh, John, you want to read those? The board may recess into closed session per Wisconsin statute 19.85, paren 1, paren C, concerning the employment promotion, promotion, compensation, and performance evaluation data of any public employee over which the governmental body has jurisdiction or exercises responsibility, specifically to discuss specific employees, employee groups, and negotiation strategy. The board will reconvene into open session for the possible <coughs> transaction of business and adjournment. All right, thank you. That moves us on to the agenda. Uh, Mark? Yeah, I would recommend a correction. Um, I would recommend striking items number 11 and number 12 from the agenda as closed session is not needed this evening. I make a motion we approve the agenda with corrections. Second. All right, we have a motion and a second then to remove uh, items 11 and 12 from the agenda. Uh, all in favor say aye. 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 All those not, same sign. <clears throat> then we still will need an adoption of the amended, right? I think so, right? No, I don't think so. I think that was it. That was it. Yeah, that was just it. it. And you covered them both, you're right. Yeah. All right. <clears throat> They will, then we will move on to uh, reports uh, presented by admin 9.1. All right, um, the 2022-23 preliminary budget. Um, so this is just a look at the budget calendar for this year. So. Um, on July 1st, DPI issued the 22-23 uh, equalization aid estimate, uh, which we use in our budget preparation. Um, hopefully tonight, the board will approve and adopt the preliminary budget and tax levy for the year. Um, keep in mind that this is, um, because it is preliminary, these are the best esti estimates we have at this point, um, but adopting this budget um, allows the district to spend uh, between now and when we will adopt the actual budget. Um, so in August, on August 8th, um, we are planning that uh, the board would approve um, the 22-23 cash flow borrowing resolution as we have in the past. Um, September 16th is our third Friday enrollment count. That's a, a key variable in a number of the different um, aids that we receive from the state. So that number is very important to us. Um, and then in October is when everything comes together. So on October 1st, um, the Wisconsin Department of Revenue will um, issue the Equalized Property Valuation Report, um, which uh, we use in calculating our revenue limits and our, uh, our uh, tax levy and the mill rate. Um, equalization aid will be certified by DPA, DPI on October 15th. Um, also DPI will issue the private school voucher information to tell us um, how much money we are going to um, tax and then return to the state for private schools. Um, and then on October 24th will be the budget hearing and hopefully the board adoption of the 2022-23 original budget 
and the um, final property tax levy will be certified at that time. So looking at our revenue for this year, so um, we are in the second year of the biennium budget from the state. Um, so as far as the revenue limit goes, um, it's the same as what we had talked about last year. Um, so there's no increase in the revenue limit for this year. Um, for us, there's no increase to the low revenue ceiling, which is currently $10,000, and we are just above that. Um, and no allowed per member <coughs> change to revenue limit for this year, and that's the same as it was for last year. Um, so for this year, um, the 22-23 revenue limit is anticipated to decrease um, by $563,270. Um, due to the non-recurring declining enrollment exemption that we had last year. So keeping in mind, non-recurring, they're for one year only. Um, so that exemption last year um, is now gone for this year, which decreases um, our base revenue that we are able to tax for. Um, so we again have a declining enrollment exemption. Um, this year and uh, we're estimating a decrease of 50 students. Um, however, remember that for calculating the revenue limit, we look at that three-year rolling average of students. So uh, losing 50 students this year actually causes a decrease of 68 students for that three-year average uh, because last year we saw a uh, larger than normal decrease in students. Um, for the purpose of the budget, we're estimating that the number of vouchers for private schools would remain steady. Um, if it happens to increase, our <coughs> revenue limit would increase accordingly, and then that money would just be given back to the private schools. Um, so for now, we're just estimating that it would remain the same. Uh, we've seen growth in the number of vouchers over the years, but it's very difficult to estimate because we don't really have any data to base that on. Um, equalization aid. Um, so this year we are estimating a decrease of um, a little over a million dollars from last year in our equalization aid. Um, that's based on um, the July 1st estimate from DPI, which is $24,433,978. Mm -hmm. So keep in mind last year um, we saw a uh, larger than normal um, increase in our state aid and that was largely due to that debt defeasance that we did in the spring of 2021 um, that increased our shared costs which meant that we um, got a higher uh, equalization aid for last year we didn't have a debt defeasance this past year um, we we don't normally do that every year so that was a one-time increase <coughs> um, so even though it, we got a decrease, we are still above the state aid that we had two years ago. So we did see that big bump last year, and now we're coming back down from it. Um, but we are still higher than we were back in um, 2020, 2021. Um, so even though we saw a decrease in that state aid, keep in mind that it's not a loss in revenue, it's a change in funding source. So when the revenue limit stays the same, um, if your lower equalization aid um, it means that it's a shift in revenue to property taxes. So we'll see that um, the property tax part of our revenue limit will be a little higher this year than it was last year. On the expenditure side, um, so wages for certified staff and support staff are anticipated to increase by 4.7% of base wage, um, plus level movement for certified staff. Um, on the health insurance side, we are looking at an increase of 3.17%, a 0% increase for dental. Our transportation expenses um, for our contracted transportation are expected to increase per our negotiated rate uh, when we signed our contract with Badger, um, which is 35 to 3.8% for most of our routes that we have. Um, typically, we budget a 5% increase in utility costs, um, which, uh, Last year we saw higher utility costs than normal, um, so uh, a 5% increase um, will be over last year's, so hopefully, um, hopefully that comes in where it should. And then um, our cost for property and liability insurance are going to be higher this year, um, partly due to the market. Um, the insurance market is uh, higher this year on, in terms of property and liability. 
Um, that's not necessarily due to us. That's kind of across the board that those rates are higher. Um, although we do have um, higher than normal uh, workers' compensation claims that we need to work through to get off, um, off our average. So we saw an increase in our workers' compensation um, insurance this year. So this is looking at our preliminary budget. So uh, total Fund 10 revenues um, without ESSER. So ESSER is the um, federal funding that we um, have received uh, that was part of uh, COVID relief. Um, so without ESSER funding, uh, you can see what our total um, Fund 10 revenues are and then our total Fund 10 expenditures. So if we did not have ESSER funding, um, that would be the balance. Um, we would be um, looking at a, almost uh, two million in the negative. Um, what that means is that um, we will be using ESSER in order to close that budget gap. Um, so we're estimating two million dollars, which if, if that's the case would bring us to a net balance of um, um, a little over $65,000. Um, so it's a very positive thing that we have ESSER. Um, this is what the legislature anticipated when they put together the um, two-year state budget was that because districts had access to this federal money, they didn't need to um, uh, provide additional uh, revenues for districts. Um, so this is truly seeing how that works in action. And um, so we're seeing the effects of it as we work through planning for next year's budget. So looking at the preliminary tax levy, um, so you can see um, the, the actual numbers from this past year and then the budget numbers that we're looking at and then what the estimated change would be. So um, we're seeing our revenue limit decline um, by uh, over half a million dollars, um, our equalization aid going down by 1.1 million. Um, our Fund 10 tax levy uh, would then go up by um, $571,608. And then our all fund tax levy um, would increase by $245,722. So what we would be looking at is a, um, a mill rate a decrease of four cents over where we were last year. And then just to put into perspective for mill rates, um, so that 825 is a mill rate. Um, these are mill rates for this past fiscal year that just ended. So last year's ours was 829. Um, and you can see other um, either nearby or similar size districts that we often look at as comparables, as well as the state average for K-12 districts. Um, so we are still on the lower end of that, um, which is a, a positive thing for us in the community. Um, so this would be um, the recommended action for tonight uh, to adopt the preliminary budget, um, including the uh, Fund 10 tax levy and then the total tax levy. Um, there should be a copy of the um, the normal format that we use for ad adopting the budget in the board folder. Um, but first questions. Amberie, I'm surprised with, uh, you know, a lower revenue limit that we are able to drop the mill rate even. Um, and I, interesting story on the news this morning was where Wisconsin ranks as far as money for public schools and it's terrible we're the third worst state in the union for giving money to public schools only idaho and indiana are worse than us and i think that's that's a reflection on the legislature and i think i think the voters should be aware of that and get out there to the polls and vote when it's time it's time to get shake them up over there. I think the concern that most districts have is what's going to happen when the ESSER money is is gone because there's going to be there's going to be a hole there, and you know while all of these expenditures keep increasing and without any increase in revenue to keep up with that, there's going to be a large gap to to try to backfill. Um, that's why a number of districts are talking about operating referendums. <coughs> 
Yeah, and that's just that's all over. That's in just about every municipality. I mean, it's not just in the school. It's everywhere right now. It's going to be a challenge in the next couple of years to come. I make a motion we approve and adopt the 2022-23 preliminary budget as presented, including the Fund 10 tax levy of $9,482,861 and the total tax levy of $16,767,771. I'll second it. All right, we have a motion and a second then to approve and adopt. The um, budget and tax levy is presented. Uh, roll call vote. Mark Yes. John Cole? Yes. Maria Mason? Yes. Jack Reed? Yes. Sears Gilman? Yes. 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 All right, thank you. Uh, that'll move us to reports by the board, starting out with uh, operations committee update. The operations committee met on June 27th. Um, Board members present were Isaac Dornfeld, Marge Jorgensen, and Joanne Tijeski. The committee reviewed the board's standing committee guidelines. They discussed the prospect of conducting committee meetings on the same date as the board's teaching and learning committee meetings. And I was selected as committee chairperson. Um, Ms. Malkovich, Director of Business Services, provided a presentation on lunch prices and student fees. She explained that students have been able to receive school breakfast and lunch at no cost for the past two school years through the USDA summer meal program. This ended on the last day of the 2021-22 school year and districts will now be returning to the national school lunch program, which means students have to qualify for free or reduced meals to receive discounted pricing. It also means that the board has to set the meal prices for 2022-2023. The board sets the prices in, we set the prices in July of 2020 uh, in anticipation of the 2020-21 school year prior to the students receiving free meals. Participation in the lunch program has improved and the district would like to continue that trend by encouraging families to utilize the food program. She recommended maintaining the meal prices that were approved by the board in July of 2020, making it effective for the 2022-2023 school year. Efforts will be increased to get families to complete the free and reduced meal applications. In addition, the administration recommends no changes to other student fees in the district, whether it's for registration, activities, athletics, et cetera. These recommendations will be presented to the board for action at our July meeting. So we'll be hearing about that later today. And then Mr. Warwick, District Facilities and Safety Officer, reviewed the updates to the district emergency and safety plans. He provided an overview of the emergency plan flip chart and the district school emergency operations and crisis response plan, which is the school safety plan. It was adopted in 2012 and later revised in 2019. In addition to the general plan, each building has specific annex to their plan. The revisions will be presented to the board for action at this July meeting. And Mr. Warwick will uh, introduce that a little bit later. And our next committee meeting date is to be determined. So we had some good discussion about the meal prices, um, you know, and holding them the same for the year. We can Anne ask Anne Marie to. Yeah, that. we had good discussion about it at our committee meeting and didn't really have any questions. I know a couple of the concerns brought up were um, supporting families while all other costs are increasing, and then. Uh, there is, like if food prices continue to increase, that does not mean that there'll be a big jump next year in prices. There is no more of a jump allowed than what was it, 25 cents? 10. Uh, was it 10? It, yeah, yeah the, the most that they would require us to increase our prices would be 10 cents. Next year? Yep. And it would be no more than 
there was also a top cap, wasn't there? No. No. So, you know, it's really important to the whole committee and the board to keep those prices low. Um, and I was really impressed that they found a way to keep them the same. So with that, I make a possible motion, I make a motion that we um, have no change to the meal prices and student fees for the 20, 22, and 23 school year. Second. All right, we have a motion and a second then on the uh, lunch fees. And student fees. And student fees, <laughs> yes, thank you. And uh, all we need is uh, all in favor, so all in favor say aye. 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 All those not, same sign. All right, thank okay. you. Pete's gonna, oh. Pete has Pete. a couple things he's gonna. Okay. Yeah, before we go and approve uh, and have a motion for uh, the safety plan, uh, Pete's going to go through a couple of things. Yep. Yeah, real quick, thank you. Um, per state statute, uh, we have to update and revise the plan every three years. As uh, Marge said, 2019 was the last time we did that in the district. So 2022, of course, uh, we presented the changes at the um, Ops Committee uh, in June. And you should see those changes in, in that plan in your board packets and online. Um, also, part of that three-year uh, update is to do a safety and security assessment with the local police department. We did that with the Beaverdam Police Department in March, all, diff all buildings. And we also do those periodically uh, once a year for sure, if not twice a year, and, and other things that we do along. Um, I'm asking for the, the board to approve the um, safety plan as is in your board packet here tonight. And if that does happen, then we will update the annexes for each school. And all of those updates and plans will be um, due to the state of Wisconsin Department of Justice by January 1st of 2023, which will get it in us plenty ahead of time for, for that. That's all I have. Thanks, Pete. Thanks, Pete. Thanks. Pete, real quick question. So um, uh, in writing, everything looks good and everything. How often do we like internally audit that stuff? Well, it, it's, as far as our department goes, we do it weekly. Uh, principals, they're adjusting things and, and looking at those also weekly uh, and talking at staff meetings monthly with their staff uh, on things. And uh, the SROs have been a great help with that also, uh, updating plans and just educating those staff members that, that need help. Okay, thank you. I know that the, the board um, sometimes gets feedback or questions and I would encourage people to um, you know, especially parents, if they have questions to reach out to the principal, if there's a specific question that a principal needs some support with, uh, they would certainly uh, be comfortable contacting Pete. But we need those questions, those are great. That helps us evaluate, that feedback is important for us to get better. Um, and the more eyes on things and the more feedback we get, sometimes, um, you know, the better that, that we can achieve our, our goals and obviously um, our students and staff being safe is a, a number one goal. And just a reminder too to um, you know the, the community that um, in addition to the practices that we have in place and the commitment our district made for um, several years um, regarding safety and being above and beyond in, in many ways, uh, we do also participate in the Department of Justice uh, Speak Up and Speak Out program. Um, and that's a resource for uh, students and families and community members if they have a concern. Uh, about a, a, a safety threat or otherwise, that they can certainly um, use that anonymous tip line. Um, and we follow through on all those, and that's part of the program um, that's in place, part of our partnership. Um, and then I also wanna thank, too, um, all of the people in our, our staff that participate in the threat assessment process when we do have a situation, or even a concern that's brought up. Um, you know, we, we go through a thorough process each and every time to make sure that we've evaluated things. Um, and that we are taking the necessary steps to follow through or provide students with support um, to help them. So the more eyes, the more communication, the more we work together as a community, uh, the safer we can make our schools. And yes, that is rain that we're hearing on this <laughs> roof right now. So, and I, I like to thank Pete and his team for their work and our principals and our staff. Thank you. Any other questions before we look for a motion? I just wanted to to commend Pete and his team. I mean, they've really gone into detail and uh, we've been presented with a lot of information that you'll see you have in your packets. So um, with that being said, I, I um, make a motion that we adopt the district safety plan 
as presented by Pete and put into our packet. The Do, I'll second it. Do we need the emergency plan separately or does it all? District safety plan is all, all encompassing. All okay, thank you. All right, so we have a motion and a second then to adopt the uh, district safety plan as presented. All in favor, say aye. 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 All those not, same sign. All right. Thank you, Pete. All right, that moves us to uh, Teaching and Learning Committee update. The meeting of the Teaching and Learning Committee, the Board of Education, was held on June 20th at the Educational Service Center at 530. Board members present were Mary Coons, Maria Mesa, Lisa Panzer, and myself. The committee reviewed the Board Standing Committee guidelines. They discussed the prospect of conducting committee meetings on the same date as the Board's Operation Committee meetings. Lisa Panzer was selected committee chairperson. Mr. Meyer, Director of Teaching and Learning, reported on procedure updates and planning for the 2022-23. He reviewed the teaching and learning focus and overall focus areas, the professional development plan, and the academic standards for 2022-23. He explained that the board annually adopts the student academic standards for the district. He provided an overview of the district's curriculum and materials, including an update on the review cycle and warehouse and explain the board annually adopts the curriculum utilizing the standards with the understanding that there are continued processes for development. Some courses are under current revision and will be revised added as they are complete. He shared the support plan for students who may be at risk and explained the board annually adopts a plan to support students who may be at risk of not graduating with a peer group. He shared recommended motions to be presented at the July board meeting, board of education meeting, that will adopt these overarching components of procedural plan updates for 2022-23. Mr. Meyer presented the end of the year achievement gap reduction AGR report. He reviewed the reading and math data along with the AGR strategy. Lincoln, Jefferson, and Washington elementary schools are AGR schools. The next meeting will be determined. So Rob is here. Good evening. In order to um, for you to uh, make those motions and uh, to vote on those motions, um, can we pull up, Mary, the procedural updates and planning slide deck? I'll just give a brief, a very brief overview of though what was presented at teaching and learning. I won't go into depth. If you have questions, you can certainly ask that, but this is the same slide deck that was used at teaching and learning. Um, so I'll just kind of give, again, the overview before the board would make a motion for those approvals. So uh, again, these are proceed annual procedural updates. So um, just a reminder, that, and this was presented a few years ago, but in teaching and learning, we focus on uh, the work that we look at focuses on a safe and collaborative culture, meaning how do we work to e with each other? Why do we work with each other in the interest of student success? We look to make sure we have an effective teacher in every classroom, so we coach teachers. Uh, we work with human resources to hire the best teachers uh, that we can. We provide professional development growth opportunities. We make sure we have a guaranteed and viable curriculum for our students with resources. And then we have effective resources for students and families uh, that uh, at, to, to um, support needs as they would arise from our, so our counseling program, our advanced learning program, students are, um, our special education program. So with that, this year, um, under those four kind of umbrellas, this year we're really working at the secondary level on math and literacy instruction. So our math teachers, uh, will be focused on mathematical high leverage mathematical practices and all, all other content areas will be looking at reading and writing strategies uh, based on our data and then at the elementary level we're really focusing on early literacy practices um, the, what, those foundational practices to ensure that all of our students are reading at grade level by the time they exit the elementary level we also have a science curriculum review going on this year so in 23, 24, we will have new science, we'll have updated curriculum uh, and possible materials, depending upon how that review goes. 
and we'll be implementing social studies curriculum and updates this year that we worked on this past year. Um, and as you know, we're heavily involved in revising our response to intervention model. We're going to continue to work on that. And another project from teaching and learning this year is to revise our advanced learning plan to make sure we're serving students appropriately that are performing at or above grade level um, across the K-12 system. So that's kind of under those four umbrellas, that's what we're working on this year. Now when it comes to approval, things that the board needs to be aware of and approve, one of those is our professional learning plan. You have access to that, you can click into that plan there. As previously mentioned though, at the elementary level, we're really focusing on that early literacy and all of our professional development days. And we sent several staff members to training this past year in order to deliver that uh, professional development in-house this upcoming school year. Um, at the middle school, high school level, we'll be focusing on reading strategies. In fact, uh, tomorrow through Friday, we have a number of staff from the middle school, high school that will be attending uh, tr trainings on that to be able to come back uh, and support that within their schools. And we partner with CESA 6 for some math support. So we have a consultant with CESA 6 that works with our middle school and high school math teams um, to help them build their expertise and make adjustments to their instructions needed. Uh, additionally, there's room this summer um, each school will be looking at their data and their needs, and there will be time in our in-service calendar for them to respond to that. Currently, many of our schools are looking at uh, social-emotional learning, behavioral, um, and classroom environment needs to support, our, to support our teachers during that time. Again, there's an in-depth plan there for you to look at. As far as standards, the new standards this year um, there weren't any new content area standards. The DPI is going through multi-year process and they update standards, a certain amount of standards every year. The only standards that are new, uh, as you look at that doc document, are essential elements. These are standards that for students that uh, might have cognitive disabilities or intellectual disabilities, um, or for other reasons um, aren't expected to perform at grade level they have alternate sets of standards um, that we use to make sure our, we have provide high quality instruction. Um, and those are the only new ones on that document. All of our course guides then fall under those standards. So th that is really the backbone of our, of our curriculum. Curriculum and materials, um, there's a Google site that's a public site where we house all of our uh, curriculum materials. We have a few courses that uh, do not have current course guides. Those will be updated over the course of the rest of the summer. We have staff working on those over the course of this month uh, and uh, August before school starts. So asking you tonight as a part of our uh, annual adoptions to approve that. And again, we'll make uh, updates and bring those back to the board uh, as we continue to make adjustments to current courses, add new courses, and again, social studies, uh, by, by the end of August, will have completely new course guides as we just went through that review. But again, those are aligned to the standards that we've adopted from the state. Again, next, this is our curriculum review cycle. Um, and just pointing out what I mentioned before, that we'll be moving into science. And then um, next up, we'll be looking at music, art, PE, and health. Uh, and then kind of down in the holes, math will be coming back up for review in a couple of years. I do want to highlight to the board, though, if we see in our data or we see um, other reasons come up, this, this review cycle is, it holds us accountable to make sure we're regularly reviewing curriculum and materials. But if we see significant issues or something isn't really serving our students well, we review that on an ongoing basis as well. One other item for you to approve tonight in this uh, wonderful bundle is our at-risk plan. You can get the whole plan there, but just something to highlight uh, as we've worked on that over the last two years, and um, board members that have been here for the last two years have been heavily involved uh, and seen a lot of information regarding that. Um, one, one new feature that came in the spring and our continuation will be moving on to this year is a competency program. So we have one of our at-risk teachers at the high school is working with students that um, on an alternative pathway to graduation. So instead of passing uh, courses, um, they're actually pa passing a set of competencies that are equivalent to the courses. And 
we had, if you were at the teaching and learning meeting, you learned that we had 100% success rate of that program, and that isn't a low bar program. It's just an alternative way for uh, seniors who um, would not be able to graduate with their peers if they had to retake all of the courses, but still meet that high level of learning. And so um, just like to highlight that, the, the wonderful work of the high school and the at-risk staff and uh, Shauna Steffes being the teacher of that program, how well that went this year as we decided, we didn't anticipate that that would go in until 22, 23, but we uh, launched that this spring at the semester mark and it um, was very successful. Uh, also as a part of the updates, uh, as was mentioned, is our AGR program updates. So Lincoln, Jefferson, and Washington, um, our aid, achievement gap reduction schools receiving funding. Um, and you can see in the left-hand column, uh, that funding goes to kindergarten, first, second, and third. So you can see uh, how we utilize that under the allowable um, strategies. So we used either coaching, where those teams received coaching to support uh, learning of small groups of students, or uh, class size, we kept the class size ratio of 18 students to one teacher or lower. And then you can see the associated data, and you can see uh, in that data we certainly have uh, certain areas for improvement, but I just like to highlight across the schools that um, percent of students meeting typical growth, if we're exceeding 50% uh, in that, we're exceeding the average. Um, so you can see in many areas we have um, you know, 60s, but as high as uh, in the 80% of um, students meeting their typical growth, which would be the statistical uh, average. So, There doesn't seem to be um, a difference whether it's coaching or class size in the, in the performance of the kids. Um, so co correct, there, there doesn't. And some of this may have changed over the course of the year. So sometimes we're at 16 or 17 students and then that class grows to 20, so we change strategies. Okay. Um, but the other part is we, we do make a, a really good effort to make sure that those class sizes don't, you know, while they might be above 18, that we're not talking about, you know, the upper 20s mm -hmm. either. Um, and trying to make sure that we use paraprofessionals, et cetera, to make sure that we're still providing that small group attention to students. And a lot of the, our work over the last year on workshop approach in math and reading that our, our principals have undertaken in the building really ensures that there are systems in place that even if we have larger class sizes that we're still providing that, that small group instruction opportunities so that every student gets uh, hands-on learning and feedback from their teacher. So I wouldn't that, let that be a license to say that, our, that we can go way right. high in, in class sizes, but I think we find ways where we can to make that still meaningful. Or it's the great success of the coaching program. That's, that's a fair point too. I'll, I think our coaches will take that. There you go. So recommended motions for you tonight. Again, you have access to all of those documents and we went through, we, we went through all of those and the highlights of all those at teaching and learning. I ask that you approve our procedural updates and plan and then separately we do need to approve the academic standards that were presented in a separate motion and we do uh, do public noticing on that per statute as well. All right, with that, I'll look for a motion uh, of number one first. I move the board approve the over 18 components of the procedure updates and plan for 2022-23 as required by policy and statute. Does the administration be ready to the school district has the authority to make non-holistic modifications to best meet the needs of our school staff and students? A second. All right, we have a motion and a second then. All in favor say aye. 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 All those not, same sign. All right, and the motion for number two. I move the board approve the use of the student academic standards as presented for use in designing, delivering, and evaluating curriculum. Second. All right, and we have a motion and a second for number two. With that, I'd ask for an all in favor say aye. 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 All those not, same sign. Thank you very much right. for your time. Thank you. Thanks, Rob. All right, uh, 10.4, board engagement. Any board uh, member that would like to share any engagement opportunities they were involved with over the last month? Not sure if okay. there was any uh, formally out there, but any board members like to share any engagement opportunities? Do they do so now? 
I uh, really enjoyed the community high school um, oh, play. Yes. So there were a number of our Beaver Dam students in there, really well run, really enjoyable performance of a show I'd never even heard of before, but it was a great show, so <laughs> well done. Anybody else? I'll put it out there, it's not a formal, there's no formal date um, or time, but if there are any board members that are interested in visiting summer school while it's um, in session, there's three more weeks left, um, just reach out to me and I'd be happy to head on over to see Jefferson, Lincoln, middle school and the high school, though we probably spend most of our time at the elementary. So just let me know. I did stop to congratulate Mel on her promotion, promotion, leaving our district, whatever. Uh, I think that's a great opportunity for her to move forward and congratulations to her. Yeah, definitely served our district very well. Mm -hmm. So congratulations to her. Anything else? All right, any other uh, overall recognitions the board or anybody would like to share? I want to recognize our old timer here, Gary, on his birthday. <laughs> <laughs> Is it today? Happy birthday. Wow. Happy birthday. Hey. Happy birthday. Nice. <laughs> typically, typically we sing, but <clears throat> no, <laughs> no, we don't want to sing. All right. Um, happy birthday, Gary. Thank you. Any other recognitions I just I wanted to uh, thank the summer school staff students and families um, got through the first part of the program and then we had our July 4th week break and uh, we're into the second second part of that so really want to thank them for everything that they're doing to make that be successful um, also I, Rob had referenced it a little bit uh, when he was going over some of the things earlier but the professional development and the commitment of our staff um, and our principals and other people um, involved in that throughout the summer and the summer months is a big deal and then uh, Gary already referenced this a little bit but just uh, recognize and congratulate uh, Melissa Gearing on uh, the next chapter in in her career and certainly hope anticipate and know that she will keep Beaver Dam in mind while she's wearing that WIAA blazer whatever they wear so she'll have her beaver dam t-shirt on she'll have a it. yeah beanie <laughs> green and gold underneath it so um awesome opportunity for her and um we look forward to uh working with her and our team to support a successful transition for whomever has to fill those shoes all right thank you very much with that we will move on to district policy and guidelines 13.1 Hello, there are seven resignations on tonight's agenda for your consideration. I move we approve the resignations as presented. Second. A motion and a second then to approve the resignations as presented. All in favor say aye. 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 All those not, same sign. All right. There are no leaves of absence for your approval tonight. We'll save those for next month. <laughs> Um, we have a bunch of appointments, so I will go through them one by one. Uh, first, there's a long-term sub down at level uh, down at H, Julie Laborde, grade five teacher for Washington Elementary. It was Wilson, but that teacher has moved over to Washington, so that uh, Julie will be filling in as a long-term sub there for grade five. Um, we also have four LTEs. On here, um, Tom Bach is a full-time substitute teacher as an LTE for the high school. Skylar Eberly as a special education teacher for the high school, LTE. Shelly Ellenbeck, full-time substitute teacher for the elementary schools as an LTE. Brandy Paredes, special education teacher at the middle school as an LTE. We have one more long-term sub on here, Mickle McClelland, special education teacher for Washington Elementary. And then our regular appointments would be Lisa Bresselow, social worker for the high school, Ethan Buss, English language arts teacher for the middle school, Rebecca Coors, fourth grade teacher for Jefferson Elementary School, Kristen DeMaster, special education teacher at the middle school, Jessica Lefebvre, music teacher for the middle school with a start date of October 31st. And I believe I hit them all. I 
I make a motion we approve the appointments as presented. Second. All right, we have a motion and a second to approve the appointments as presented. Can we have a roll call vote, please? John Crow? Yes. Maria Mason? Yes. Jack Green? Yes. Gary Yes. Jesse? Yes. Isaac Norco? Yes. Mark Yes. Thank you. Thank Nicole, you. Nicole, just a quick question. Um, what What is our stat, current status mm -hmm. for? <laughs> we, um, ELL, we need um, ELL teachers and uh, we need a math teacher at the middle school, a math teacher at the high school. We need an ELL coordinator. We also need um, one special education teacher that would be our off-site teacher. So that would be our EBD program that's been traditionally off-site. Um, looking, I'm looking over here because these are the people I'm talking to every day about <laughs> what we need and what we don't. Uh, associate principal, <laughs> athletic director, uh, will be interviewing for that position next week. Mm -hmm. um, so. Lots of things in the works. Things are coming and going, but it's it's a little here and little there. So we're we're working on it. The principals are also very heavily um, interviewing TAs right now. So we've been hiring a lot of TAs. So things are moving. Stacy's been very busy. Good. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah, you bet. All right. Thirteen point four uh, board policy updates. Yeah. Um, a motion is needed to formally identify Title IX coordinator updates and relevant policies associated with the Director of Student Services position and address changes for the Educational Service Center and all mm -hmm. applicable policies. Mm -hmm. So somebody would like to make that motion. It's on the mm -hmm. executive I move, update. I move that Tiffany Sponholz be named as Title IX coordinator in relevant policies associated with the Director of Student Services and the address for the Educational Service Center be changed in all appropriate policies. Okay. All right, a motion and a second. Just all in favor, Mary? <coughs> all in favor say aye. 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 All those not same sign. All right, with that, we will move on to payment of claims. I make a motion for payment and claims in the amount of $4,132,905.90. Second. All right, we have a motion and a second then to approve payment of claims. Uh, roll call vote, please. Maria Mason? Yes. Jack Yes. 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 All right. Motion to adjourn. You're you're right on. It's your birthday, and you are right on. <laughs> you are right on. Second. We have a motion and a second for adjournment. All in favor, say aye. 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 All those not same sign. All right. Thank you very much. Have a good night.